Welcome back to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me. If you just tuned in, we are joined with Luis Palmer. He is on a tour that he started July 7th, 2007 from Lucerne, Switzerland. His tour has lasted one year and three weeks thus far. He's passing through Los Angeles. We are happy to have him here in studio with some of his crew members and um, t- talking about his solar taxi. Okay, now how do you deal with um, weather? You have uh, on the top, it's sort of um, convertible, like in a w- if you will, and it has a plastic zippered uh, top that you can just throw up. It's sort of like throw the windows up, mm-hmm. and then you're you're open. Uh, how have you dealt with say thunderstorms and different issues with the weather, and and how has that affected the power you're getting from the solar panels? Um, I, I didn't have big problems with the, with the weather. Just when we started in Switzerland, the first four days across Germany, we had serious rain. Uh, can you still get power from the solar panels when it's raining? Uh, much less, of course. It's creating much less, but it doesn't influence me at all because there is another way how to get solar energy into the battery. The, the solar cells on the trailer are just producing a part of the ele- electricity that I need. There is another very good way to get solar energy into the battery of a car. And how's that? And that's if you plug it in. You simply plug it in. But at the same time in Switzerland, I also have solar cells, a lot of solar cells on the rooftop. And from there, I feed 5,000 kilowatt hours of electricity into the grid. And that means that what I take out along the way from the grid is exactly the same amount as what I feed into the grid in Switzerland. So what you're doing is it's sort of like um, uh, we can buy carbon offsets. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're you're doing an even trade in a sense. Whatever you're using and you're plugging into that amount, you're counteracting any power that you're using here by plugging in. Exactly. The idea is if every car in the world was pulling electricity from the grid, then we need more nuclear power plants, eventually even more coal plants. But if every car in the world, every owner of those cars is feeding the same amount of electricity into the grid with solar cells or any renewable energy, then we do not need more of this carbon emitting and problematic um, power plants. Now, there are people who would say, and I've had different questions come about, okay, well, a two-seater, how can I drive a two-seater when I have a family? How can I only go 50 miles an hour? You know, these, these things that people want here and now, is the technology there to create uh, vehicles, uh, you know, that can fit a whole family, that can go faster, etc. You know, for the world tour, I'm absolutely happy having a car which runs on 50 miles per hour and which has only two seats. I'm absolutely happy and I didn't have the means, the possibilities to make a bigger car, you know. But I'm telling you what, if if technologically, it's not a problem at all to make a four-wheel car with five seats that runs 150 miles per hour. An electric car can do that. That's not a problem at all. There was a stunning fact that you told us at UCLA the other day. You showed us a map of Africa, and 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 there was like a little thumb uh, thumbnail sort of size mark that was a square yep. in northern Africa. And I want you to tell us what that represented and uh, about that. It's a square of 130 by 130 miles. And imagine the idea is if we cover that space in the Sahara Desert where nobody's living, we can easily cover it with solar cells and solar uh, to produce solar power. That is enough to power for the whole world. Or we can also say, take all the rooftops of all the buildings in the world and cover them with solar panels because we ha- that, that space is not needed. Just cover it, and also that would be enough to power all the electricity that we need in this world with clean energy, no more global warming because of production of electricity. Why do we keep spending our time going into nature preserves, going to the coastline, drilling, taking the years and the time and the money, going into the earth and just sucking out this fossil fuel that took millions of years to uh, be produced? Why do we continue to spend the time and money to go drill when we have wind power that's clean, we have solar power, and that is shocking? Well, listen, we have Thomas Gottschalk. Thomas is a technician. How long have you been on this tour with Luis Palmer? And tell us about your experience. 
Well, the first um, impact was that I, I had no girlfriend anymore since or after one month, so it just um, <laughs> oh, was finished. Don't you worry. I'm sure when you get back, you'll be a big star and have lots of girls after you. <laughs> <laughs> well. No, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. Okay, we're also joined here in studio with Eric Schmidt. Hello. Hello. And Eric, you're from Switzerland? No, I'm German as well. Oh, you're German <laughs> as well. Okay. And you're a filmmaker. Exactly. I joined, I joined the tour in India. It's a great uh, opportunity to do both um, filmmaking and, of course, something useful in a way, because I think um, in the end we're going to have a documentary that really can, really can reach people, that we can really show something. We're talking to a lot of interesting people, so I'm really looking forward to make that documentary. That is great. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. And are you going to stick with the tour till the end? Uh, right now I have to go back uh, uh, in the United States, but I'll, I'll be back in Europe again. That's so. great. Um, listen, we've got a bunch of calls coming in, 818-985-5735, 818-985-KPFK. Uh, Michelle from Long Beach, welcome to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me. Hi. The thing that I wanted to comment about is that I do think that we need to send uh, a united message that we need to put it on our rooftops, not using open space, even though it's the Sahara and it sounds like it's just desert. But that's a natural space, too, and there are animals there, and rooftop solar is the way to go. Thank you, Michelle, for your comment from Long Beach. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the next person who is Jerry from St. Louis Obispo, I think that is. Yes, hello. Thank you. I'm just traveling through the area, and I was hearing your show. I'm an engineer in the semiconductor industry, and I just wanted to point out on the behalf of your listeners that um, it's, it's, it's not... It, it's it's a little too easy to paint a rosy picture that 130 by 130 miles of solar cells would solve the entire Earth's energy needs. I'm, I'm sorry, but there's a carbon footprint in generating the power to create those cells and maintaining them. That's a, distri- that's a distribution nightmare. Okay. Excellent. Good show. Luis, if you want to comment on uh, on Jerry's questions and comments there. What I know is after two years, depending on where the solar cell is um, is installed, after about two years, more or less, the solar cell should be able to produce the same amount of electricity that was needed to produce the, the solar cell. Let's go with Tony in Long Beach. If, uh, line 7, if you can make it real brief. Yes, very brief. Um, I used to live in Germany. I gave a lot of political lectures at universities in Würzburg and and Hamburg, all over about these issues. There are powerful interests at play that would actually threaten the capitalist system. So for your program to go through, which I support, you'd have to have a radical economic change more towards, I guess, a socialist system or a system that's more uh, for working people because the big elite interest will fight you tooth and nail. Yeah. I just know that the United States is sending $2 billion a day into foreign countries to get their petrol. That money is missing in the United States, and we could create massive amounts of new jobs if we implement new technologies like solar power or wind power. Renewable energies would make a much better life and even a much better economy for all of us. Listen, we have no choice, and I, I have to mention our brothers and sisters from all over the world who are in Iraq right now and our fallen soldiers um, and civilians. Uh, What is the price? Why are we there, an illegal war, for petrol? We have to stop this. We have absolutely no choice. Um, We're running out of time here today. I am so honored to have Luis Palmer, inventor of the Solar Taxi, here in studio. You can see the Solar Taxi tomorrow in Malibu. Make sure you go to our show's website if you want solartaxi.com's information. And information on the guests, so go to our website, show up in Malibu tomorrow if you want to meet Louise Palmer. I'm Sherry Beal. You're joined with me on Healthy Planet, Healthy Me. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week, same time, same channel. Be well.